Hey, this is AQ Young coming at you from BattleMap.net. Today I'm going to give you a little tutorial on terrain, uh, show you how to make uh, snow terrain, desert terrain, island terrain, make it believable, make it look good. Uh, so I'm going to start with the blank canvas for you guys. I don't ever use the uh, the generated uh, terrain thing because it none of it looks good, none of it looks real, um, and I mean, it only takes a couple of minutes to do it yourself and make some real looking stuff. So um, we'll start with this blank canvas here. Um, you Basically, we just want to go over using the tools and how to use them um, because it's critical and, and a lot of people don't use them or don't know how to use them. I see it, uh, mappers who have uh, been in the game for a long time and I could tell by looking at their terrain that they they don't know about these tools or they've never experimented with them or tried to use them so hopefully this will help uh, the people that need help with that and uh, they can make realistic awesome looking terrain in the background to their map uh, because their maps are already awesome anyways so uh, I would start with the terrain bump here you can use terrain raise or lower if you want more control because it just does it incrementally but with terrain bump um, you, either which way you want to go ahead and use the square brush because that's what makes realistic looking mountains, not the round brush. Okay, I usually start uh, pretty pretty good size. With with island type maps, you want to keep the hardness at a, somewhere in the middle, 40, 50, whatever. Um, that's where you want to start. If you're doing like snow type maps, you want a more peaky mountain because they're more highly eroded. So you're going to go with less hardness to where the yellow box in the middle here is smaller. Um, but we'll just go ahead and use it where it's at, the hardness at 0 0.40, that's fine. Okay, speed is fine where it's at, so I'm going to go ahead and start making some mountains here. Basically, you're making them kind of geometrically and just raising them as you go. Um, I'm just kind of keeping the mountain size the same. But uh, uh, there's not a whole lot of rhyme or reason to it, but you want to just keep an eye on how much ground you're raising up and what you're doing with it. Um, I usually make some, a series of bumps that size and I'll go a little bit bigger at that point to kind of engulf the whole thing and start bringing it up, uh, scaling it larger. So we'll go from there. Make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to get a little height out of the back here. Okay. It does take some practice, but uh, but um, you can see it's not too difficult and to get the uh, uh, desired effect. So, so you can see I already got kind of a mountain range. And the thing is, is uh, you use the square brush because it's more realistic. Because any of you guys who have ever worked in uh, the construction field, who have ever framed in a roof, um, you know that it's all geometric patterns, right? And that's the way the ground kind of naturally erodes. You got these hips uh, on the outside, and then you got these valleys on the inside where you know the water would erode the uh, the land, and, and then it piles up at the bottom uh, once we start using the erosion tool. So usually at this point, um, this is all fine and dandy. I got this little mountain range in the background. Um, to add perspective, I usually always, if I have room, try to add um, some mountains, smaller mountains in the, in the front of the big mountains in the back because uh, you'll see in a moment what that does for the perspective, overall perspective of the map. So, you know, you want to be able to see past them while you're on the ground to see the big ones in the background. So don't go too high with it at all. In some spots you can go higher, but make sure you, you have room to see through them. Um, let's see what we got going on here. So I can go higher right here. Okay. At this point um, is when you start using the erosion tool. I'm doing this in a specific order for a specific reason. You'll see why. I'm not putting any paint. I don't have any textures on it yet. Um, and I'll tell you in a moment why that is. So I'll go with the erosion tool. Um, I usually keep the hardness uh, set pretty low. I don't want it to just destroy, wipe out all the, you know, all the details that I've made here. Um, 
density deformation landslide, they can all stay where they're at, it's no big deal. Um, I just want to do like a mild deformation to kind of just take those hard geometric edges off and just kind of uh, smooth them out and then bring a little bit of the erosion down to the base of the mountain uh, where the dirt would naturally pile up. So you can kind of see, boom, just with that little bit, even though there's no paint on it, the mountain ranges are already starting to look pretty realistic, you know, as much as it could be for a video game. <clears throat> so this is the point when I do do the paint. So first thing I want to do is get rid of the, the grid meter one. I want to put in a, uh, a texture, uh, a ground texture. So if I'm going to do an island, I usually like to go with, uh, I think, Coastal Grass 4. I like the darker ones. They look more natural than some of the lighter grasses they have. Okay, so there's there's the surface. This is all that's staying here. Then we want to use a cliff paint. I don't ever use the mossy cliff paints because I don't think they look very good. I like to just do this stuff myself. So um, Cliff 1 looks great as an island. Um, so what you want to do is make sure your hardness is set at zero, distortion all the way to one, uh, and then do the speed just about a quarter of the way up, nice and slow, you have more control over it. Turn on your brush constraints, and for an island type setting, you want to, uh, the only thing you need to really change is the minimum slope, and set that at about 35 degrees. I mean, you could, you can go a little less or a little more, and, and depending on what it looks like and what you're trying to achieve but 35 degrees is a good starting point for an island map with snow you'll want to go steeper than that right around 45 or 50 degrees so um, at this point we can just paint on our cliffs and you'll see the mountains starting to look pop out look a little more realistic all right just paint it on and I can see right now that there's a little more grass than I would like. I would like a little more cliff exposed at a lower angle. Um, so this is where you can kind of tweak it a little bit. You know, I'll try setting it at 30 and see what that's like. If that'll give me the desired effect of what I'm looking for. So just paint it on. That's that's pretty good. That's that's right about where I'm looking for it. So <clears throat> at this point, you're looking at what what goes on with the natural erosion uh, on real mountains. Um, anywhere where this grass is on the top is is naturally eroded, which is why the grass is growing there. Uh, the cliffs are exposed rock. So in real life, um, you got you're not going to have like lumpy or bumpy or really deformed areas where grass is so you want to use your smooth tool and just come over and just make sure you smooth the edges if there's any funky looking stuff especially if you did a lot of uh, of the uh, erosion tool you'll have a bunch of these lumpy looking ridges and you want to make sure they're all smoothed out with your smooth tool I didn't do much erosion on this map so it's not too bad but uh, just go over the areas that have the grass and that's why you want to do the paint after you do the erosion. Okay, get rid of the geometric lines, make them look smooth. Keep the lumps on the rocky areas because that's more realistic. There's a few lumps there, so get rid of all that. Okay, you got some smooth, you know, some stuff here. <clears throat> so you can get, kind of get the idea of it. All right, the reason I do the little mountains in the front and the big mountains in the back is this. This ain't the best mountain range I've ever done because I've done this really quick, but you can see it gives perspective. It makes the mountains in the back look huge, even though they're not that much bigger. Um, it just gives it a more natural feel, okay? So there, boom, that's done. If you want to add any vegetation to it, um, I usually typically go with... Uh, jungle if it's an island and I do like the distant forest stuff because you're not up close and it's low on resources put it behind stuff you know don't put it in the front and everything and hide your mountains because that just doesn't look great you can put it behind some of these mountains just to you know a spot here and there um, put it back you know in the back here so it and the reason is is you'll see kind of what it does it makes it look more 
Uh, you can just see it in the distance there. It looks natural. You know, there's not going to be that stuff all over the place. It's not a full-on jungle. You know, you want it to be kind of sporadic. So, all right, so that's done. So there, you got a generic little um, island map. So um, the best combinations for uh, the ground for, say, a desert that I found, like a high desert mountain region, is going to be Dirt 4 and Cliff 2. Um, that looks pretty decent, right? Um, used it in Red Dead Mines, my first PC map. Um, and for snow, uh, the best that I found for distance is coral. And uh, a lot of the cliffs actually look pretty decent with the snow, but cliff one looks pretty good too, you know. So, you know, that, that kind of looks like snowy mountains. You want to use cloud three because it adds more haze effect and uh, it's a little bit darker with the lighting. Um, so anyways, that's it. Um, there's your really quick tutorial on how to make terrain. So hopefully it helps some of you guys. Take care.